All right. <sighs> Hi, I'm Shadex. Hi, I'm Dr. D-Chops. And this is Divinity or Original Sin. We are playing the Enhanced Edition. Before we start, I want to go through our skills really quickly. So I have one point in Wand to increase my damage by a little bit. Uh, one in Scoundrel, which will allows me to use these skills. And two in Telekinesis, which allows us to move objects around on the ground. Uh, for Talents, we have Pack Mule, which doubles what we can carry and walk it off, which we don't really care about. Yeah. For our Attributes, we have seven Strength, so that we can carry more things and 8 Dexterity, so that these skills won't fail. Uh, skills are Fast Track, which temporarily increases our movement speed. It's like the only thing that actually increases your movement speed outside of battle. And Walk in Shadows, which makes you invisible and is extremely overpowered. And then the other thing doesn't matter, because another thing. Uh, the only different ability I have is Lockpicking, which I just use at the start. And for classes, uh, I pick Wayfarer. Uh, it just gives me a crossbow to start. Everything else it gives you doesn't matter because you just customize everything. And uh, Shadex is an Inquisitor, which gives you two wands to start with. Alright. In the day. And timing starts right after this load screen. Alright, let's get started and use the increased move speed. The skills actually start in a random position on your hotbar, so you have to like pay attention to make sure you're doing the right thing. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do our first skip right now. By going invisible, we can skip the tutorial fight. So there's three people that are just gonna kind of run down here, and you're they're, they're meant to like fight you, but we can just skip it. This is actually like introducing the villain as well, but we don't care about lore. Uh, we are going in two different directions at the very start. I'm going into the tutorial dungeon so that I can get lock picks. Uh, that'll let us skip the second fight, which is actually a huge skip. It probably saves like a few minutes. Yeah, because fighting is really problems. slow, so being able to skip it is really fast. Yeah, fighting's turn based, so it just takes a really long time. Here, whenever you do dialogue, all the options are mapped to the number keys, so you can just mash through them really quickly. Let's skip over all the long sections. Short burst of mashing. So up here, there's like a battle going on. I'm just going to go invisible and you can just run right through it and not care at all. I'm also picking up some barrels. I'll continue to do for a little bit. And here, this door is locked until the battle is over, but I can just lockpick it. I don't have to worry about it at all. Yep. So the reason we're collecting barrels is that throughout the game, we don't do any fighting. We're really weak by the end, but in, at the very end, you're required to kill two, well, three final bosses. And how we're going to do that is by placing a ton of barrels in a chest and then dropping the chest on final bosses. Yeah, the barrels that we're picking up, uh, water, oil, and poison barrels, are the heaviest things in the game at, like, 60 pounds. And when you stuff all these barrels into a chest it greatly increases its weight and then you can just kind of throw it on top of enemies and it does a ton of damage also here's a sheep hopefully he does a flip on sheep one thing you'll notice is there's an encumberment system so because i'm carrying so much weight i can barely walk like i'm walking super slow um, one thing we're going to do to get around this is pick up a companion and we're just going to unload all of our heavy stuff on them, and they'll just stand still for the whole time. Alright, so I just made a little detour to get this arrow. It is a smokescreen arrow. We'll be using it in the end of the game. It's a random chance of if it'll be there or not, so we just uh, can check it a couple times. But it's pretty common, so I got it the first time. And now I just trigger some plot, and we're going to move on to the... End of the world, or end of time, sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of like your home base kind of area. And there's a lot of plot stuff going on that we're just going to skip through. Yeah, we just skip through all the plot in this game. I don't think so. Let's go. This part introduces the, uh, the end boss, which we don't really care about. We can just skip the cutscene. 
understand all of this dialogue. And if you've played this game before, get ready to see all our skips. We will not be completing any quests throughout the whole game. It's pretty cool. The route for this game is actually really, really cool. Or plot. Yeah, we just mash through bot plot. And now that gives us our fast travel system, so we can teleport back to the town and move on. We're going to be abusing teleporting a lot in many ways. Uh, right here, our who comes up to me and he gives me a pyramid. Basically, there's two pyramids in the game, and if you click on one, it teleports you to the other one, wherever it is. So I'm going to click on it now, and I'll go into this woman's like house and basically just steal oh my. Yeah, She's having bad. Oh, who? <laughs> and now that we have two of those things, uh, we can just kind of warp between our warp between each other whenever we want. Super useful. Yeah, and we actually have a glitch that will allow us to warp pretty much wherever we want, which we're going to be using to do just huge skips and skip around the game. Now we have picked up our only party member that we need, which is Shahan. Uh, he's going to be kind of like a barrel slave at the start, where we're just going to be dumping all these barrels onto him that we're collecting. Yeah, so I, I basically just plop Jahan down at a gate, or at a waypoint, and then we're all going to send our barrels to him. Everything that's heavy will be sent to him, and he's just going to hold on to it for us until we need it. I was really yeah, so there's a whole bunch of enemies here, and I can just kind of go invisible and uh, then teleport away, <laughs> and it's really safe. So the reason we get Jahan is that near the end of the game, um, instead of fighting a boss, we can just sacrifice him. Oh no, we can't kill him. He's our barrel slave. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use him for barrels first. Yeah, so right now, carrying around all these barrels is really impractical and annoying. So I'm gonna go over here and pick up this like kind of hidden chest. Uh, this chest is really strong. So strong that it can carry like as many barrels as you want inside of it. It is really convenient. I'm gonna send that to John. He's gonna load it all up. Oops. I'm gonna move on to the next area. Move towards the next area. Other. And I'm just gonna be sitting on Jahan right now and placing all these barrels one by one into the chest. And this chest gets super heavy. Uh, by the end of the game, it weighs like 2,000 pounds. Um, so anytime we, if we have this in our inventory, we can't move it all, which is why we take telekinesis. We're going to be, like, juggling it. We can still send it to each other instantly, and we can juggle it around with TK. So we're going to be still maneuvering with it. It'll be all right. I invisible past some enemies. Uh, it's safe now. But I can't get all the way to the next area, so Shadex is just going to teleport to me with the pyramid and then also go invisible, and he can just run straight past. Yeah, invisibility is just so overpowered in this game. You can skip like every fight with almost every fight with invisibility. Especially when you have two. And then I can just teleport right to him and we can move on to the next area. But we're not actually going to do anything immediately in this next area. We just need the waypoint to teleport to. And we're going to set up a different glitch. Yep. And if you played this game before, you'll notice that we didn't do any of the murder mystery stuff in the beginning. We didn't really complete any quests, uh, but we are done the first area, trust us. We've achieved everything we need to achieve. Uh, the only useful thing left in this area is uh, this little chair over here. So you can see, like, uh, in the under the mini-map, there's, like, coordinates uh, whenever you move around. Uh, if you sit in a chair and then you teleport to another area... It actually stores the coordinates that you have from the chair and instead of warping you to where the wherever the waypoint is so i can just kind of teleport to a completely different area in this one level and i'm like right at the end near this uh this troll yeah to... so this is the end of this whole area we didn't even go to that winter place um so chops is just gonna go invisible go past this guy 
And as long as I don't get too close, we can just skip the entire area. Yeah, he wants the troll toll for crossing the bridge, but you can just go invisible and like warp your characters through it. And in this area, we're going to do exactly the same nice. thing with the chair. Even with the yeah, same so chair, because the same coordinates are also useful, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So all we do there is just go there to get that waypoint, and we're going to do another chair warp and skip that entire area as well. Yeah, so this is going to skip over entering into the, the Phantom Forest itself, which like you need to do a whole bunch of quests to get through, because there's like a big poison cloud that insta-kills you in the way. But uh, we can just use this warp to go right past, and now we're inside of it. Uh, save here? Yep. So we're going to split past again. Um, I'm There's supposed to be like a required, well, two required fights over here. Uh, we're going to skip both. The first, I'm just going to inv invisible past. These enemies are like huge. They would one shot kill me really easily. Um, yeah. And then after that, there's supposed to be a required boss, but we can basically just sacrifice Jahan and skip it. And I'm invisible passing this thing, which will insta kill me. And there's this big door, which is locked in. Uh, you normally can't get through, but we're gonna do. We're gonna abuse the teleporters again. So I'm gonna place it in a very sp specific spot, and I'm gonna Safe. start placing around. So I need to. If I choose the wrong dialogue options here, we have to reset to that save. So I'm gonna go super slow. God, please. Oh. And we should be good. Shahan gets disappeared. And we do not have to fight the boss. Good. So, so he's going to go invisible yeah. and teleport. He's going to teleport to this crystal since it's completely blocked off. It's going to put him through the actual doorway onto the other side. Well, you can see this big scary boss here. We don't really care though. And I can just uh, teleport him to, to him again and just completely skip over that fight. Yep. And this is the final dungeon of the game. Um, there's a door that's locked here, and to get through it, you have to have, I think, 20 star stones. Yeah, something like which that. Which are these, ob these objects that you collect by doing quests and just over your whole journey through the game. Yeah, just kind of a progression check. Yeah, you, uh, you before, can't even like, like... You start the end. Yeah, you can't even, like, only do the main quests. You have to do, like, some side quests to get extra ones to be able to go through this door. And it takes a long time, like, literally hours yeah, to get enough. Ridiculous. But we're not going to do that because we have TK, and TK is really good. And yeah, it turns so out you can just kind of throw this straight through the door oh. and then teleport to it. Oh, come on, let Easy. me use it. Ooh. And then I send it back to Shadex and uh, can be on our way. So, that saves so there's another hours. one up here. You're supposed to like do a seance and light all these candles and do that in specific orders. It's just a weird little puzzle, but uh, we can just do the same thing that we just did. Skip this. Yep. This one's like a little bit more specific, but it's still easy to go. Lucky find! Lucky find! I love that guy. <laughs> and now we're we're basically at like the final quest of the game at this point. Uh, we're gonna walk up here and like trigger basically hit the trigger that lets us go to the ending of the game. Yeah, this opens up the final required three fights. <coughs> we just need to make well, one quick stop in order to get an item to beat the final boss. Because although yes. our, our chest is pretty good, it's not quite good enough. Oh, yeah, our chest will naturally one-shot the boss, which means we'll still have combat with them, and in combat we will just get destroyed. So we need something that will one-shot kill the final boss of the team. So we're gonna quickly go over here and do another chair warp. I have infinite... It just is consistent, apparently. Every time I have infinite haste here, and I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. It's fine. So we're gonna go to a different area on this map and do another chair warp. And what we're doing is there's this chest in the game that when it when it gets destroyed, 
it drops a lava. And the lava, whatever it hits, basically dies. It does like 30,000 damage, which is huge. Yeah. Unless they're like literally invulnerable. Like there's yeah. a, a status in the game that makes things invulnerable. It will insta kill everything. So we can use it to kill the final boss in one one shot, which is huge because the final boss actually used to take so long. Can you save? Just in case the invisible doesn't go for it. Well, re <laughs> for so, some reason, uh, at this specific spot, invisible just tends to fail, and I have no idea why. Yeah, it's no supposed clue. to be 100% chance. Like, if you yeah. mess over the skill, it says 100% chance, but sometimes it just doesn't. I like how I told that. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Oh my god! Okay, I'm gonna do it then. The fuck? This puts us here. I'm like nowhere near anything. The spirits told me they did. I'm sure of it, madam. Um, but over here, just need to go over the bridge. Yeah. Over here, there's this chest. This is the the fabled lava chest. I'm gonna save because there's a whole bunch of traps, and you get completely owned. And I got completely owned. <laughs> it's like very specific where you can walk, and the pathfinding in this game is like 10 out of 10, absolutely perfect. Yeah. Never screws the you over. Pathfinding is awful. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play it safe and just move these barrels out of the way. Yeah, that's fine. So I can go around. And after this, we're gonna go start the ending sequence. Teleport to you and go. So we have the chest. I have the fabled lava chest. And, and we, we to... are going to retrieve our other chest as well. This chest. And now we're gonna go to the end. And because he has the chest with him, he won't be able to move at all right now. Yeah, so I'm going to use this time to just uh, pick up all of these barrels that Shaddix got a while ago. Uh, I'm you. Here, I'm sending you one more. Come on, give me the option. There we go. May the void... No, the, right, so the, this... lava, the lava is inside of the chest, and when you break the chest, the lava pours out. This yeah. So if you play the game on release, this section wasn't in. Uh, this section's actually pretty long. It'll probably take, like, five-ish minutes. Nah, not quite. It's... But it, this version of the game is still faster because we can do the chair warp, which is a, just a faster implementation of a glitch in the first version. And uh, the final boss. Oop! I hit the wrong option. <laughs> oh my god! God damn it! That, that wastes <laughs> just a little bit of time. It's not too bad. It lost like 10, 20 seconds there. No worries. So you have to hit. I think it's two and then three. But I was mashing through the. Uh, I'm. You just used to mash in one in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So often you have to mash. Pretty one. much. It's just every now and then you have to hit. Specifically, have to hit other options. Yeah. Yeah, so the we have the two chests. Uh, this super heavy chest, it's like 1800. It'll get even heavier in a little bit. We're going to use this to kill a couple bosses. And then the lava chest we're going to use on the last boss. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I just went invisible on a stake. It doesn't matter. I was getting ready. I was hitting three for the option. And then here we have to sit through a little bit of plot. So we're just going to level up some stuff. More strength, although it's not really necessary. More TK. Just because it's nice. And uh, some more skill points for more TK. I'm also going to get uh, leadership. Gives us slight damage buff. Oh. Go, 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 go. I was leveling. I was leveling skills. Doing it inefficiently. Gosh darn it. Jeez, man. We lost like two seconds there. Gosh darn it. And now we're in this, like more boring or section there's like some puzzles and stuff here it's pretty uninteresting we're just gonna yeah. collect a whole bunch of barrels fortunately yep this is one of the few sections of the speed run where you actually get ore yeah and there's like fortunately there's like a ton of uh 
barrels in this area, so we can skip out on collecting a lot earlier. Yeah, I think we get like seven barrels total here. Pretty good, considering it's a required area. Send it to me. So Shadex gets a key for this door, and then I walk forward and just immediately open up the door, because you can just immediately send objects to each other. It's kind of useful. And do some more teleporting. This is like a crazy dream world or something like that. Here, we're going to open it up. And now, barrel here, three barrels here, another barrel over here. Now we have like a lot of barrels. Yeah, this thing weighs like, how much does it weigh? It should stay on there. Loading it up. This now weighs 2,350 pounds, 0.01 for some reason. And if we drop it on a boss, the heavier it is, the more damage it does. I'm just going to TK it over. It doesn't really matter, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we can't use our py pyramids in this section, so we just have to run everywhere. Jadix is going to get here, get to the door before me, but eh, it's fine. He just walked right through that chest, you cheater. <laughs> All right, pick it up. So now you're going to see... This is a reminder, we haven't really done any quests. Uh, we haven't fought one enemy yet. This is the first fight of the game. We're gonna finally kill uh, one of the end bosses, basically. Uh, make a save, just in case. So there are three required fights, and this is the first. This is, I think it's called the Trife or something like that. He's this big yeah. scary blue guy. He's supposed to be like hounding you the whole game, telling you that you're terrible and you're gonna fail and awful. And we just dropped a chest on him and did 2000 damage, and that's <laughs> over half his health. And Shadex is invisible, so he's gonna like, the Trife is gonna get a turn, but he can't see Shadex, so he's just gonna kinda buff, get really mad, uh, and then Shadex is just gonna slightly shift the chest, and he's going to explode. Good fight, GG. Good fight. Very, oh, let me, let me do my thing. Gosh darn it. <laughs> there. So we have to kill this orb. Uh, we don't do much damage at all, so it takes a while. And this is why I chose Inquisitor. I have a pretty good spell. Yeah. It just does a bunch of damage. Shadex can kill this thing pretty quick. Whoop, don't get so on fire. <laughs> um, next, we're going to go kill Leandra. You got up who first. You haven't even met in the game, even though she's like a major person. In the speedrun, you don't even meet her. Well, she's like the giant that yells at you in that one area, but that's it. Well, she's that girl in the ice place. She? She's, she's in a lot of places. Yeah. She's like a main villain. Uh, uh, she's up here. We're gonna... We're gonna, like, kind of avoid this fight. So I'm gonna go over here. Uh, send it. I'm going to drop the chest. Drop the chest. Like, come on. There it goes. <laughs> I'm gonna use this arrow that we bought to uh, smoke screen her so she can't see me. So even though there's gonna be some dialogue here, she won't actually start combat because she can't see me. And then I'm yeah, just so going to kind of dump this chest on her face, and then she just dies. Yeah, so if you don't do that, if you don't put the smoke screen there, as soon as combat starts, she'll just summon, I think it's like seven or eight guys, yeah. who we can't kill at all. There's yeah. just too many. <laughs> they get just a turn fast. immediately, and uh, they just kind of completely own us. Like, yeah. you'll, you'll just get stunned or knocked over. They'll all turn invincible, and then you'll just kind of get steamrolled. Yeah, not only are they strong, but some of them are like, you can't kill them for turns in a row. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, also, there's one more fight here, but again, we have invisibility. We can just kind of run past it. Let's save just in case. Yep. So, powers of invisibility. We can run past, unfortunately for Zandalar. Oh no, Zandalar. Uh, he, he cannot run past. He did not know the strat of turning invisible and running past everything. So he gets to fight these guys. Hopefully he'll survive. We'll see. But uh, you may have noticed we left our super heavy chest. Because we still have the lava chest. The lava chest yeah. is pretty good against this final boss coming up here. Even though in my inventory, it's just an, it just says a normal chest. Like There's nothing special about it's just, it. It's just a chest. It's fine. You'll see. 
Uh, save it again. Yep. So here we go. So I'm going to go up and, and start this dialogue, which will be the trigger for the final fight. Shadex is going to get in position here. That's that thing. My guardians. Uh, just save here. My fallen friends are risen. All right. Let's do Let it. Go, go, go. Oh, no. It's the Void Dragon. Rip the Void Dragon. So you actually can't see the lava, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the final battle. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, that was the final boss right there. And the game might glitch out here. I hope not. <laughs> it oh, come totally on. did. God. Oh my god. Okay. Quit out, rejoin me. And I have the pyramid bound so I can... Oh no, I can't. Well... Uh, it's oh, if you save it, it goes. Oh, mine's good. All right. How I, did you save? I, I just hit save and it and it went. Oh, like quick save? Yeah, quick save. All right, it's fine. Like, We're I fine. I swear I tried that. This game oh. is fine. This is like the epilogue. Um, you just yeah. have to come here. You talk to like one person, and then you run to the end of the game, conveniently called the end. And I have uh, infinite things again. Infinite haste. Oh, you do? I don't. It's <laughs> weird. So you can see haste actually makes you significantly faster. Yeah, well, already at the end. So here's the door. It's literally called the end. I need to wait for Shaddix, though. And timing stops. I think we we talked to some people after this. Yeah. And then so, timing stops. One more dialogue. And time. World record. Woo. Uh, maybe. <laughs> We'd have to time out loads, but maybe. I think the record's 25, like 25. Or something. Okay, so that was Divinity Original Sin, the Enhanced Edition. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.